Namaste, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. I was having technical difficulties. Uh, when I was in my vehicle, I always put my Shalom, Shalom. Yahweh by Shem Shai by Shem Hakadash Barak down to you. Whenever I'm in the vehicle, I always put my hotspot on from the phone that I'm recording from right now to another phone. As soon as I got out here to count, it started streaming live. Then all of a sudden, my screen was black. I couldn't see anything. So what I'm doing right now, the phone that I had on my notes on, I had this is the phone I'm recording from. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go into spirit. I'm going to try and um, continue to go with the precepts I have for this lesson because I think it'd be a good lesson for us right now. You know. But with that being said, I want to give all the honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Yahweh Kadash. No honor to my elders at Great Millstone, talking the truth of the spirit. Single honor to the elect. Peace and blessings be to all the sisters, men, women, and children. The Duke and sister, the one third, Shalom, Shalom. Right, we're not gonna let Satan try to hinder us from doing this word. We're gonna open up with Psalms 124. If it had not been the Lord Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, who was on our side, now may Israel say, If it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters have overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Who's the proud waters? The proud waters goes back to when the enemy shall come in as a flood. All right? Even Jake said in the world, yeah, man, when they jumped and they flooded his ass, meaning that they swarmed him, right? He, he got engulfed. Notice, I'm in Tampa. We have something known as the Gulf of Mexico, which is water, right? So if it hadn't been for Yahweh about Shema Shai, we would have been overtaken completely. Talk about as of right now, during these min these times of us being ministers and apostles and prophets right now. Okay, because evils are coming to the world. I mean, gross darkness and everything as we speak of. Verse 6: Blessed be the Lord who have not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken, and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of Yahweh by Hashem Shai, who made heaven and earth. And how have we escaped? Because Yahweh Shai said, You have not chosen me, I have chosen you. And I have ordained you, and you shall bring forth meat um, fruit of repentance, man. That's where we stand at right now. Because we're not, we're not captivated by the rest of the world. Our people are still captivated. By these distractions, these attractions, you know, talking about um talking about Kyrie Irving wanting to get a trade, talking about the Super Bowl, all right, talking about the things of this world. We're talking about prophecy because you have Israelite groups saying there's not one of the people of the sea hip that's coming out, all right? They're not one of the people of the coming famine that's that's, that's, that's to come about. Why is it that um Dabu Seven is constantly uploading these videos talking about how all of these air producing factories are being are being taken out. All these air producing factories, they're being burned down. All right, the cost of living is increasing and the cost of food, but but the money that you're making, you're not getting more money than what you do for the same job. All right, it's gonna lead to famine, it's gonna lead to a lot of 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 of, of up um, unrest here in the world, all right. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 through 19. Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. And how shall fulfilling that? He, he fulfilled that thousand years ago when he became the sacrificial lamb. Now he's going to come back as a lion coming out of his thicket, the destroyer of the Gentiles, and also to redeem us from the evils to come. That's why the scripture clearly says, the righteous shall scarcely be saved. Right, so we're not saved right now. So we're looking for a savior. And that savior is going to be our side. But before all of that, the scripture clearly says what? It says, through much tribulation shall you enter to the kingdom of heaven. So much tribulation is going to come to us, man. Especially on this side. That's the whole purpose of us being out here. We know the evil is to come. We've already repented. We are, you know, we're keeping the laws, statutes, and um, commandments to the best of our ability. 
But the Lord said to warn them. So it's our duty to warn them of the evils to come. Because if not, they're going to die in their iniquity anyhow. But the Lord said that he's going to require it at your hand. It's Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 8 through 10. And this is what these modern day churches are not warning the people of. But thou son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. And this is spiritual because we go to Revelation 10 and 9. What did the angel tell John the Revelator? To eat the whole roll in. And the angel told John, and you shall again prophesy against many kingdoms and nations. John the Revelator died in the island of Patmos in the salt mines. So they mean he has to be here again today. You must remember, at Matthew the 13th chapter, it clearly says that um, holy men, they wish to see the things that you see or the visions that we see, right? So back then, when, when Ezra was talking about an arrow shot from one end of the earth to another, he didn't know what a missile was thousands of years ago because they, they didn't have missiles back then. Like when it speaks about the mark of the, the MOTB, the sea hill, they didn't have the word um, biochips or, you know, um, sea hips in, in, um, back during that time. So they had to use um, tools that they used back then to, to kind of replicate what they're talking about. So John the Revelator had to eat that roll back then. It's like we had to eat the whole roll right now. And we're not being rebellious to what's been presented to us. Ezekiel 2 and 9. And when I looked, behold, and a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. Remember what Yahweh Bashim al Shai said. I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. So they come in the absolute completion of the book. From Matthew, I'm sorry, not Matthew, from Genesis, all the way into the Apocrypha, all the way into the Revelation. Okay? Because I have the 1611 King James Version Bible, which consists of all three of those books. Old Testament, the Apocrypha, and the New Testament. Ezekiel 2 and 10. He spread it before me, and it was written within and without, and there was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. Right. Lamentations and mourning and woe. And that's what we're telling our people right now of what's to come, because they're too comfortable, man. All right, our people are basking in, in this comfortability, like they say. All times make strong men. Strong men create um, uh, easy times. And easy times create weak men. So that's why the Lord said, Gird up thy loin as a man. I require fit of thee. See, fashion, cars, status, and money, that, that right there, quote unquote, is what makes a man today. But then when the power grid goes out, right? Now you're going to have to go back to your primitive instincts, right, of survival. A lot of people don't have that technical instincts of survival. Now, I'm not going to say I know it all, but I've taught myself a couple of things in a way, right? Like when bullets run out, how are you going to defend yourself? That's why you got something called self-defense. Like you use an eye to cook food, but do you know how to start a fire? Or do you have a kit that can help you start a fire? I'm not saying that's going to save me. But I'm privy to what's to come. Evil times are going to come. And our people are not preparing themselves for that because we live in a we live in a society where we live in a society of convenience. When you live in a society of convenience, you tend to forget how hard it is to actually cook a meal rather than just sitting on your ass and ordering and ordering it or just throwing it into a microwave and then nuking it. So imagine in those days when the power grid goes out. Imagine in those days when you can't just turn a knob and then hop yourself into a tub and take you a hot or cold shower. Imagine in days you can't wash your hair. Imagine in days you can't wear your pair of sneakers, your favorite pair of sneakers. Imagine them days when you can't you can't change your drawers. If you have to put yourself in the mind state of what's to come, you really have to. Especially women. Women like comfortability. So imagine those days when you can't, like I said, take a shower every night, change clothes every day, eat eat a balanced meal, drink clean water. Those days are coming. 
going to read it again. Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 9. And when I looked, behold, and hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without, and there was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. And that's what's to come to the society that we're living in right now. Lamentations, mornings, and woe. That's why we have to warn the people, man. So when you so when you telling people that the C hip um it's not it's it's not what you say it is the MOT is not what you say it is that it's sin, but guess what? Sin is still death, but the C hip is a real thing, it's actually evident in it's here right now. You know, so a lot more evils are gonna come. Okay, so let's go to second Ezra. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 19. And it says, matter of fact, let me start at 18. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. Once again, men shall be afraid. Remember what I said. Hard times make strong men. Strong men make easy times. Easy times make weak men. So what would that lead back to? Weak men creating hard times. Look at the times that we're living in right now. So even men are going to be afraid. And man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword. The gun is the modern day sword. And spoil their goods. Spoil means to take. Right? We already live in a society where people have been living in the same neighborhood for years, but they barely even know the neighbor that's two or three doors down from them. Let alone the neighbor next to them. Right? And guess what? You may and you may be more privileged than your next door neighbor, but imagine them having more kids than you. It could just be you, your wife, you know, or your husband if you're a woman, I believe. You know, your, your significant other, your your one son or daughter, and your and your dog or your pet fish, and you're still bringing in food. You still got your lights on. You're bringing in water, but them over there they're struggling. Sooner or later they're gonna be looking at you. They're gonna want to take your belonging. They're gonna want to spoil you. That's the times that we're living in. The times that we're coming to. But this is why it's going to happen. Second Ezra 15 and 19. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of lack of bread. For great tribulation, for a lack of bread, for the lack of food. Right? That's why I say, Yo, watch me. God seven had brought out a, a, a video talking about. All of a sudden, you remember this was happening. So many meat processing factories or plants was being burned down. Now an egg processing plant was burned down. And all this happened spontaneously. I.e. Bill Gates, i.e. Bill Snakes, he also bought or is a owner, a co-owner, how you want to look at it, of Beyond Meat. What is Beyond Meat? Beyond Meat is like a plant-based, soy-based um, product where they create meat for people who are quote unquote vegetarian or vegan, man. So they want to get, so they want to starve the people out. All right. Remember the Georgia Guidestones, the fastest way? Think about it. They said they wanted to have humanity and perpetual um, unison, so to say, with nature by doing what? Reducing the world population by 500 million to 500 million. Remember on TED Talk when, when Bill Snake said, they can do that by what? Vaccinations. So, so think about the documentary. Talking about diet suddenly. You have like D1 athletes, like strong, fit, at the peak of their life, dropping dead, so to say, right? Now all of a sudden, all these processing plants just going up in flames, right? So the quickest way will be through what? Vaccines. Also through what? Starving the masses out. Now you're going to have the true Hunger Games. Then you're going to have the true purges, man. Remember that hat that law in Chicago? Where that was like, if someone was to kidnap or to murder or commit grand theft or arsony, they said that they would not have, they're not required to go out there. But they, they got so much scrutiny from it, that, um, they actually said that they're going to postpone that bill. So they actually want this stuff to happen, man. It's called Auto App KO. They create the chaos in order to put you back in order. That's the times we're living in. Great tribulations coming, man. Right? And remember what the scripture said. The scripture said that a man is a hedge 
a man is a hiding place, not just any man, a man of the Lord. Let's get that really quick. I think this is on Isaiah chapter 32. Isaiah chapter 32, verse, verse 2. And a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind. That wind is what? That destroying wind is going to come from the thumb of the warheads too. And a covert from the tempest, like the hurricane or tornado, as rivers of water in a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. In other words, we're going to be protection. We're going to be a hedge. And even says that it's a rock. It says that where, where there is no hedge there, the woman is spoiled, something to that extent. The man's the hedge. What's a hedge? If you ever seen one of those big, if you ever seen one of those gardens in the back of a mansion that had these very, very high looking like grass trees or bushes, those are called hedges because you can't look in and see what's going on. I.e., Steph Curry, he actually wants to stop the development of a, um, a low income based housing project or, or housing community being built near his mansion. Why? Because he fears for the privacy of him and his family. You know? And so he said, if that's the case, he wants to have higher hedges, right? Or, or higher fence. So that's the times that we're coming into. So a man's going to be a hiding place. And, and when I say that, what I'm about to bring out is not for the women that believe. I'm talking about the two third women, man. The unruly women. This right here I'm about to bring out is for those women who say that they don't need a man or they're taught ill to a man, right? This is Zechariah chapter 14, verse 2. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled means spoiled. Once again, house is rifled, which means spoiled. Salakia. And the women ravished. You know what ravished means? Ravished means to be sexually taken by force. Right? Because like going back to like the, the early 1900s, if a woman was in a if a woman was looking very feminine in like a luxurious looking dress, a man will compliment her by saying, you look ravishing, meaning that you look so attractive that a man would want to take you and ravish you. So it was actually a compliment to say that to a woman. He, of course, a man a man of eloquency would say that to a woman. So when a man would tell a woman that she looks ravishing, they mean that she looks sexually appealing. But the scripture says that, how you doing, man? All right, now. But the scripture says that houses shall be rifled, which means spoiled, meaning robbed, and women shall be ravished. That's why a man is a hedge. A man is a necessity for a woman in these last days. See, when a woman say that they don't need a man, what they say is that they don't need a physical man in the house because they can work and provide. But if someone wants to break into the house, who are they going to call? 911. Do you think they want a woman to show up? No, they'd rather have a man show up. It's like, just like if there's a fire. A woman would rather have a male firefighter show up. Because if you got to carry a body out of a house, you don't want a woman trying to carry you. You don't want a man to carry you. Let's be honest, bro. Right? They even have they even have certain um um tests in order to become a firefighter to see if you can carry like a, a hundred and fifty some pound dummy. And most women can't do it. That's why I'm, that's why majority of firefighters they're like jack, they're big, you know, muscular men. Because if somebody's unconscious in the house because of smoke inhalation, you gotta carry that body out. And and then you still got to carry your body weight on top of that, right? So a man, a man is a stronghold for a woman. And in these last days, a lot of women are going to be taken and ravaged because they don't have a hedge. And think about this whole gender war thing. Like I said, I'm only speaking to the women that say they don't need a man. The women who do believe me, how about she now shall pray for the elect? Hey, I pray for you. And I pray that when we get those powers, that we can protect you. You know, but until then, keep praying like we are, right? Going back, and the house is rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. So that means that a majority of the people in the city, what's going to happen? 
they are going to go into captivity, meaning concentration camps. That's what's going to happen. Because it's going to be civil unrest. There's going to be complete anarchy out here. All right. Why you think they would why you think they're trying to pass all these laws against the NRA, the National Rifle Association? Because they know that there's so many guns. There are more guns out here in America than there are people. And there's over 300, 330 something million people in America. That alone, the millions and millions of pounds of ammunition out here is gonna literally turn to the wild, wild west. But they want to have less casualties on their side. So they'd rather us become the people, fight and kill each other off in a, in a mass so that they can come in and then finish us off. Think about it, man. They know they know they have the psyche of the people. They tell everybody, Shalom, Walmart, you how about Shimon Shah by Shimon Kaka Dust Breaker Thought. They tell everybody on Thanksgiving, get become gluttons. You eat, you get full. You get, you know, the bar you're drinking all of it. Then the very next day, what do you do? You go out there with a hangover. You fight over discounts over a TV. You you, you trample over or, or, over an elderly woman who just want to get bread. Part of forgot it was Black Friday. And now she's somewhere in the hospital. People are dying for discounts on, on senseless things, man, in the world. That's how, that's how much they got your minds wrapped up around them. To the point where everybody was going out to get the emo. Not emo, you know what I'm talking about. They go out and get the beetle juice because what? They believe that there was a, I'm not gonna say there was no, there was, there was a release of a Miley Cyrus, put the B in front of the iris, but they got someone the CDC. What's that, what, what, what does that stand for? The Center for Disease Control. And they have a patent for these diseases, meaning that they own these diseases. So how do you think they're getting released, y'all? Stop it. The brother Naquam dropped Ezekiel 7 25. Destruction coming, and they shall seek peace, and there shall be none. Exactly. This, this right here is the calm before the storm. I've been living in Florida all my life since birth. And we always know that when there's a hurricane approaching, you know when the hurricane is approaching. Because at first, it'll be the waters will be very, very still like in the ocean. Then all of a sudden, you start hearing a little whistling wind. Whistling wind. Right now, that wind is whistling. The branches of the trees are starting to sway. Why? Because the storm is near. And that storm is destruction. Man, I'm trying to get this brother pizza. The corn drops Second Peter chapter 2, verse 9. The Lord knoweth beautiful. The Lord know of how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. Facts. Big facts. Uh, big facts. Going back to Zechariah 14 and 3. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. So the Lord going to fight for us in these last days, man. But still, prophecy has to be yeah, um, United States shot down, shot down the China, um, China's um surveillance balloon. Let's be honest, y'all. They made that into a big spectacle. If they really wanted to, they didn't have, they did not have to make that news. And China has already proven it's also an RT. It was a civilian aircraft. It was not a civilian balloon. So with that being said, then they said they waited till it went over the ocean so that they could shoot it down. Then they're going to observe it. This is what you call sensationalism. To get the minds of the people to think, oh, China's also involved in this war with Russia. Even though we know China and Russia are allies, they weren't trying to surveil over America. You want to know why they're not trying to surveil over America? Because America has sold American land to China already. All right? A vast majority of American products are made where in China. Come on, man, stop it. So that's why the masses of the people really don't know what the hell is going on. A lot of people, a lot of people are just are, um, empty-minded patriots. 
They just empty mining pages, but none of them won't pick up a gun to go fight for America, right? Anyhow, this is Isaiah chapter 19, verse 2. You got to remember going to Revelation 11 chapter, America is spiritually Sodom and Egypt. So there's going to be a time here in America where the citizens are going to fight amongst each other. If you don't believe America is spiritually Egypt, look on the back of a dollar bill. They got the Washington Monument. It resembles the obelisk over there in Egypt, man. Come on. Isaiah chapter 19, verse 2 through 4. And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians. In other words, the Americans against the Americans. And they shall fight everyone against his brother and everyone against his neighbor. City against city and kingdom against kingdom. That's what's going to happen right here in America. There's no unity here. Hell, even amongst themselves, even amongst Esau, all right? You got people talking about the far left and the far right, and they're Edomites. You have that, even the scripture says, if a house is, if a house be divided, it shall not stand, it shall fall. And guess what? You have the, you have the Senate and the House of Representatives. That's a division right there. The Grand Old Party. You have the Democrats, you have the Republicans. Hell, it's not even a bipartisanship anymore. Yeah, you have the Democrats and the Republicans that sit in the seat, but then you got independents. Then you got conservatives. Then you got progressives. There's so many schisms in the body, man, of that government and, and amongst the American people. So America's also divided. There's no unity. And that's how they come to the mind of the masses. Listen, we out just listen, let's just put race aside. The commoners who are us, right? The paupers, the servants, the serfs until the until the, um, the oligarchs, the conglomerate. We outnumber them by not just millions, billions all over the world. But because they have a, because they play the psychological mind game on the masses of the people, we look at them as people that we need in, in place in order to rule over us. But really, the masses of the people are sheep. But those of us who speak the truth, they call us conspiracy theorists. Or they call us misinformed people. Whatever. The Quran dropped Psalm 78 and 49. He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath, and indignation, and trouble. The Lord going to bring all of that here, man. By sending evil angels among them. That's a cut. That lets you know, man, the angels are, are not just some, aren't some toddler, infant-looking, Edomite babies with wings on their back with bow and arrows like Cupid. No. The angels are fierce, and they will bring evil. Evil means an ill time, a bad time. That's what's coming to America. People can feel it right now, but they don't want to believe it. When the last time... When the last time can you recall... Somebody coming up to account mocking the elders, the mocking the brothers. They're not doing that anymore because it's words coming to pass. But now, what's the so now what's the new flavor of the week? Oh, what you what you prophesying ain't true. Oh, this is oh the, the MOTB is not the CEO, right? Oh, the arrows are not the missiles anymore. Oh, Esau is not the Caucasian man, woman, and child. So now what it is, they're not mocking us and laughing at us. Now they want to say what we're saying is not true. But it's evident. You can see what's happening. It's quite evident. And these false preachers, and these false deacons inside these churches, not warning the people, man. Right? But what like the scripture says, vain is the help of man. Now, the men of the Lord, we not, we're, not, we're not preaching of our own word. We're preaching of the word of Yahweh Shimao Shai. So Yahweh Shimao Shai is our help. That's what I open up with. Psalms 123. And the last verse said, We will trust in the name of Yahweh Shai. Isaiah 19 and 3. And the spirit of Egypt, America, shall fail in the midst thereof. In the Hebrew, it says, shall be empty. 
right? Meaning that there's really no, there's really no, the life of America is really gone. It's not really here anymore. Remember in the in the book of Jeremiah, what does it say? It said, "How was the hammer of the whole earth pretty much lost its power or ceased?" Because when you think about in court, they have a wooden mallet. Order in the court, order in the court. That's another hammer. So America wants to be the judge of the earth, but you're losing your power. Remember what Russia said? Russia said, any nation that helps Ukraine, you're not a part of World War III. What happened? Why the sin of Abraham takes over there? Like I said, why I work out? I work for the Tampa Airport. When I was on the line, pretty much out there where the planes be flying at, two fighter jets, two what? It, it takes money to, to, for those things to take off. But why did those two fighter jets take off? Those two fighter jets took off because Russia had a destroyer in the international waters that was circling around Hawaii. Technically, they did not do anything illegal, but it had America on high alert. What they call it like, you got like DEFCON 3 and DEFCON 4, DEFCON 5. They were probably DEFCON 3, man. The Quran dropped Proverbs 12 and 22. Lion lips are an abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. Why are we his delight? That the words we speak are not our own. We speak of his words. That's why Reve not Revelation, Romans 3 and 3 said, So what else songs do not believe? Said that unbelief made the fate of Yahweh by Shema Shah without effect. God forbid, yea, let Yahweh by Shema Shah be true, but man a liar, so we shall be justified by our words. Because our words are not our own. Woo, that's heavy. Right? So, Isaiah 19 three again. The spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst of and I will destroy the council thereof and they shall seek to the idols and to the charmers and to them that have familiar spirits and to the wizards. So they're going to go to their prognosticators. They're going to go to their Nostradamus. They're going to go to the men and even the women that are set up at high esteem in these seats. But man, they don't know what's going on. Only how about Shima Shai know what's going on. Matter of fact, I think I got a quick piece of it. Hell yeah. This is Isaiah chapter 40. Is it 40? Isaiah chapter. No, I'm sorry. Isaiah chapter 41. 41? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 28. For I beheld, and there was no man even amongst them, and there was no counselor that when I asked of them could answer a word. Behold, they are all vanity, their works are nothing. The molten images are wind and confusion. So in other words, the Lord said, I, I ask of you and you can't tell me. But even in the book of Job, the Lord said, where was you when I laid the foundation of the earth? And that's rhetorical. That's heavy as hell. The Lord said, where was you pretty much when I created the heavens and the earth? When I made the constellation. That's what the Lord said, man. So what was man? So now man have all the answers. That's why the scripture said, this mind, the mind is desperate, or the wine is wicked. That's the evil. And like, who can all um, know it, man? Matter of fact, I don't want to put you there. Let me get that little kick before I jump over. Hey, Paul, look at you have much of my shot. One swipe. <laughs> I think I did. Yep, that's what I wanted. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. The heart, which is your mind, the R, is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, Yahweh, search the heart. I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways, whether good or bad. And hey, they remind me of that beautiful piece that the brother um, Laquan brought out. Right here. To get every man according to his ways. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 9. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust to the day of judgment and to the punish. Exactly. Exactly, man. <laughs> Jeremiah 17 and 10, I, Yahweh, search the heart and try to reign even to give every man according to his 
ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Notice it said doings. Doings. Okay? So in other words, your works. What you do to preserve yourself. Right? So evils are coming, man. Let's get it. Revelation chapter 12. Revelation 12 and 10 through 12. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm way ahead. I'm too far ahead. Revelation chapter 12 and 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Mashiach, his anointing, which is the son, Yahweh Shai. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. What does that mean? Esau will lay snares before our people, man. He always does that. Then he can plan to the heavenly father what we're doing. That's why the Lord said the deceit and the deceiver are his. Because Esau does that uh, purposely to the heavenly father. So technically he is our brother, right? But salvation coming from Yahweh Shai, and that's our strength. Verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. How is it that we don't love our lives unto death? Well, for one, we shed the old man and we've been born again. But then technically, even the Lord said, the Lord said, strive for the truth unto death, and I shall fight for you. That's why Elder Malcolm will say, and to those men who risk their lives and freedom to do so. But technically, what we're saying is tyranny. So we are citizens, citizens of uh, America, Babylon the Great. But when we're talking about destruction and, the, and Yahweh Shai coming back to take them over, there's them in tyranny against them. All right, I'm sorry, not tyranny. Um, not tyranny. Not the word. But we'll go with tyranny, though. All right. It's the same word they use in the military, like when you go against your country. Okay? Revelation 12 and 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because you know that he had but a short time. So when I went to the elders, I went to the elders on um, their live stream, and they're talking about treason. The water, a lot. Treason. I knew it started with a T. Shalom, Shalom, Yahweh, Shema, 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 And to the graceful sister, Khan Baf God. Shalom, Shabbat, Shalom, Yahweh, Shema, 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 I truly believe you want a new woman that was willing for Yahweh, Shema, but let's get back to it, though. Shalom, beloved, Shalom, 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 Shalom. Right, so they know they got about a short time. So they're trying to, like even the elders was talking about it today. They, they sit down, they live stream, or whatever you want to call it, right? They're talking about they want to, they're gonna, they want to chip everybody. They're not gonna be able to chip everybody because they don't have enough chips. They were going to like how Ukraine have a certain element or whatever it is a chemical that they need to produce the chip. But guess what? Russia's gonna take over Ukraine. That's why America is back in Ukraine. They don't give a damn about Ukraine. But what it is, is that every war is a banker's war. So it's all about money. Why do you think China and Taiwan is bickering, not bickering, feuding? Because China ain't bickering. They're feuding over those um, islands in the South China Sea. And why do you think America's involved in that? Because Taiwan is one of the major producers of those sea hills, man. See, but the masses don't know that. All Americans... All Americans see is that, oh, we got to go over there and help the Taiwanese and the Ukrainians. Y'all don't give a damn about them. Y'all don't. Y'all just block. Y'all are just senseless, uninformed, arrow-headed patriots, man. So we know that we know that this time is coming to us. To an end for evil. You know, they got but a short time, so they're trying to rev everything up, man. Right? Let's get it. This is Isaiah 
Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59 and 19. So shall they fear the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun, which is the east. Because that's why, another thing too, that's why you know, on the Japanese flag before the war, you know how they have the red dot in the middle of the flag? They also had rays of the sun indicating that the sun rises from the east. But then when they got bombed and, and um, subjugated, they took the rays away. That's what it means by the rising of the east. The rising of the sun, meaning in the east. In case you didn't know that. My spirit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got excited. Isaiah 59 and 19. So shall they fit the name of your house from the west. It is glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of Yahweh shall lift up a standard against him. And you know they also, and you know they also have reference Revelation 12 and 15. Let's get it. Revelation 12 and 15. Let's see what it says. Revelation 12 and 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman nation of Israel, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. That's heavy. Oh. A gold-plated motorcycle. Let's go to Psalms. But this is what this is what I open up with, y'all. This is the precept. Of, these are the precepts I open up with. But let me get straight to the point. This is Psalms 124. Verse 1, if it had not been Yahweh, Hashem al who was on our side, God made Israel say, if it had not been Yahweh, who was on our side, when the men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. That's heavy, too. Think about that. When you go back to Genesis, when it speaks about Eve and the serpent, serpent is not an actual snake. It was an actual person. I.e., what did the God that's called so-called white man, the pale man that came to America. He called him the pale man and also forked tongue. Well, if you ever seen this, um, the mouth of a snake, how does that how does it look like the mouth, the tongue of a snake? How does the tongue of a snake look like? A fork. Come on, man, you can't make this up. Spirit heavy. Psalm 124 and 3. Then they had swallowed us up quick. Yeah. When their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. When you, when you hear about the proud boys, what people you think about? East Indians, uh, Chinese? No. The proud boys would be who? The so-called white man, woman, and child. That's who the proud boys, or the proud boys are. So that's who the proud waters are. Verse 5, then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be Yahweh, who have not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken, and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of Yahweh, who made heaven and earth. That's where our help comes from, man. All right, going back to Isaiah 59, 19 and 20. So shall they fear the name of Yahweh Bashim al from the west, and his glory from the rising of the sun. And the enemy shall come in like a flood. The spirit of Yahweh Bashim al shall lift up a standard against them. In other words, we're gonna, there's going to be a defense um, for us against them. Verse 20. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, to Zion, the monument, and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, said Yahweh Bashim al so who's the Lord going to come back to? Those that have repented. Those that repented from their transgressions, man. Yeah? So we are the hopeful elect, man. We, we don't know if we're the elect, but we're doing what the elect would do. We're speaking about those that say, y'all say that y'all hope. We know that we're the elect. No, you don't. So what does the scripture says? He that endureth to the end shall be saved. And those who shall be saved shall be saved in what? Hope. 
after I get that, let me get the brother Peace up. The brother Yerom and Gabar dropped Sirach 28 and 21. The death thereof is it, forgive me, the death thereof is an evil death. The grave was bitter than it. That's right. Death is, ooh, remember, it even says in, Re in Revelation, there be some that shall seek death and shall not find it. That's scary. That's called torture. So, right, 28 and 22, it shall not have rule over them that fear your house. Beautiful. That's beautiful. That go right with the uh, the power walls, right? Or the, or the flood. It shall not have rule over them that fear your house. Neither shall they be burned. Neither shall they be burned with the flame thereof. Right? Because what's that? Two parts there shall be cut off. But the third part shall what? Come through the fire. That's heavy out the water, man. The water for that one. Water out. You have a shepherd, shop and rock a Rock a thought to you all. Cut, cut, cut. Now, close out priest, closing precepts. Romans chapter 8, verse 24 to 25. For we are saved by hope. Hope, y'all. We saved by hope. So we're not saved yet because we're hoping to be saved. Hell, even Paul said it. Let's get that really quick. I'm in Romans, y'all. I'm in Romans. This is Romans chapter 10, verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Right? So we hoping to be saved. Man, even Paul said that we might be saved. We hoping to be saved, man. We know we have the promise, but we hoping to be saved from the sad destruction of Romans 8 and 24 and 25. But we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he get hope for it? So in other words, if you see that hundred thousand dollar car over there, why you hope for it? If you see it, you can go and get it. But salvation, it does not seem likely at the rate the world is going. But that's what faith is. That's why faith comes into play. Think about this. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith is the subset of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So if you see, why you hope for it? To so those who say, oh, we oh, we know that we're in something, 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 say, you don't know. Yeah, because John the Baptist was Elijah in the past time, but John the Baptist didn't know about you. How wish I did? So you how wish I know who we are? How you know? Well, hell, well, even the men back then, but more on a on a on a higher level spiritually than we were. But here, here it is, you got individuals saying the so-called apostles. Now they're saying that data 12. Man, y'all buggy. If you don't need hope of faith, then you don't need your have a shine then. Save yourself. Don't save them. They don't want to be saved. Nah, you already saved. Well, you don't need to preach no more. You already saved. All right. Romans 8 and 25. But if we hope for that, we see not. Then do we with patience wait for it? That's why the scripture says, Revelation 13, 9 and 10. To any man that have the ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience in the faith of the saints, man. We, we hope for that, man. You know? Galatians 5 and 5. For we through the Spirit. All right, which is these words as well. We through the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. What is going to be our righteousness when we enter into the new covenant? Because all of us will be righteous and we will not have to teach our neighbors anymore. So how the hell are we in the new covenant when we're still preaching and teaching? Hell, the whole world not even under our tutelage, not even, not even under our vibration. So how the hell are we in the new covenant? So once again, Galatians 5 and 5. But we through the spirit went for the hope of righteousness by faith. Exactly. Colossians 1 22 to 23. In the body of his flesh through death, so your house shall have to die, right? To present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. So because you have a blood, we are pure, right? If he continue, here we go. So we're not saved yet. If he continue in the faith grounded, 
and settle, meaning that you can't be moved. Oh, here you go. And be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. All this is based on faith and hope, y'all. Which ye have heard, remember my sheep hear my voice, and what? It says, oh, man, it's heavy. It says, um, faith comes by hearing. That's in Romans 10 chapter. Right? Believe it at that. All right. And which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I called and made a minister. Heavy, man. Which goes back to the elders of Great Millstone. No, no, no. I got to bring it up for those who want to say the so called apostle, the so called elders. I'm listening here, man. There are two pet peeves of mine. There are two pet peeves of mine in this ministry, man. When somebody disrespect my elders, I look at them like my fathers. When somebody try to switch the doctrine, I don't like those are two pet peeves of mine. To disrespect the elder, like he's not disrespecting my father. And to change the doctrine, you can be leading some of the sheep astray. And that could lead them to death, and that ain't right. Those are two pet peeves of mine in, in, the, in the ministry. You know what I'm saying? Anyhow. This is um Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, verse 14. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? Then the word for preacher is a prophet. Solomon was known as the preacher. Come on. And offending the little one, yeah, offending the little one, all like that. And that's what I mean by leading them astray. And they lie to them, man. And defending them, I don't like that. That's just, it, it, just, it touched me. Because how Shai gave his life to make us, how Shai gave his life to make us shepherds over the flock. If you were offending one of the little ones, or if you were leading a shark of flight, oh, I said that backwards. <laughs> if you're leading the flock astray, man, I got a problem. Because how Shai put me. And like by the men, like you and the elders, of course, he put us, he put their lives in our hands. Hey, man, I got to be in defense of the gospel when they do that, man. That's why, hey, I feel some type of way like that song say, you feel me? Romans chapter 10, I'm on one. Verse 15, the house how they preach, except they be sent, being the apostles. So how you going to call them so-called apostles? All right? They are the apostles. Hey, Shalom, Shalom, grace my sister, how about Shalom, Shalom? That shit like a gospel up and down, right? How shall they preach and set their descent as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring great tidings of good things. As for them who speak, who speak ill of our elders, so but they have not all, all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith. Come by hearing and hearing by the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So, how do they get their faith? By listening to the elders of Great Millstone, like my man out on the highways and Bible. Because the elders were doing that prior to YouTube coming about in 06. There was already street preaching. But then when they start uploading their videos, that's when I, I U I C came out of the woodwork. I S U P K, other, other Israelite groups, man. Right? So, how can you hear without having a preacher or a teacher or a pastor? So it starts with the elders. So for those of you to discredit the elders, man, you just digging yourself. You standing in, you standing on the same ground. You digging the pit for yourself to fall into. It's beyond me, like beyond meat, right? So this is um Second Thessalonians chapter three, verse one through five. A couple more precepts, and I'm gonna close out. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course. And be glorified even as it is with you, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. For all men have not faith, right? All men have not faith. The IUIC, you faith based Israelites, then what the hell are you basing this on? That doesn't make no damn sense. You can't, faith is a gift that's been given to us when you have about Shinao Shai. So for you to say that, hell, you don't even care about Yahweh Shai's blood. If I'm saying this blood, how the hell are we gonna get faith, man? Y'all bugged out, man. Y'all need rain on y'all. Pray crazy. So we gotta pray for one another, because not all men have faith. I mean, what's the worst thing that, that can happen other than the Lord taking spirit from you in these last days for you to be 
be around a man that's faithless. Remember what it says. Let not the incredulity of them trouble you, for they shall die in their unfaithfulness. Can I go to what incredulity means? Incredulity means that you're, you're unfaithful. You lack faith. So credulity means that you have faith. Go back to the word credible. Right? Um, verse 3. But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Right? So even though we pray for one another, the Lord is faithful. He will keep us from evil. Why? Because we have kept his word. So he will keep us from we have kept his word of patience, so he will keep us from the temptation, the hour of temptation. Yeah, Revelation, the third chapter, right? Verse 4, and we have confidence in the Lord touching you that ye both do and will do the things which we command you. Which is what? Don't take to see her, all right? In the name of the Lord is Jehovah Shimei HaWashai. Jehovah the Lord, your Father's name, it's only the God's son's name is Jehovah Shai. Right? And those are the names that you need to be saved. Okay? Verse 5. The Lord direct your hearts, your mind, into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Mashiach. Hold on, you lay your house, Mashiach. Beautiful. Uh, you want me to borrow John 17, 9 and 10. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, which is what the Israelites, the only the elect. The, the Israel of God. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given. So the Lord said, you, you've given them to me. That's why he said, remember when the Lord told, he told, uh, told the apostles, what's up, brother? Maybe he told the apostles to go and get something to eat, and then he came back. They were like, who gave you food to eat? He said, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me. So he never came on his own accord. He came to do the will of the Lord. So every so even the man that he chose him back then, he chose them because the Lord told him to through the Spirit. So he said, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me. Right? For they are thine. Meaning the, the apostles were the prophets. Remember, like I said earlier, John the Baptist didn't know he was Elijah. Right? But yeah, how was I knew. So we had to be those prophets, y'all. Come on. For they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And if you read down further on in that chapter, the Hawashai goes on to say that let us be one with him as he is with the Father. So that killed the whole Trinity BS, man. Talking about the Father, the Holy Spirit, and Yahushai are one. Because even Yahushai said in John the 14th chapter, I go unto my father who is greater than I. Stop playing, man. Remember. Even in First Corinthians, the, the 11 chapter, it says, Yahweh is the head of Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is the head of us men, and the men are the head of the women, and the women are the head of the children until the son gets to a certain age where he goes under the tutelage of the father. But the son will always honor the father and the mother. That's how it always goes, man. Always, man. And the elder women are over the younger women to teach them how to be wise. Right? Beautiful, man. Beautiful. Um, I got a, a couple more pieces and I'm going to close out. Spirit of heaven. So this is um, just quick. This is a quick team. Quick team, yeah. This is second Ezra chapter 16 Verse 74. I'm sorry, let me start at 73. Then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as the gold and fire. Hear, O ye beloved, say of the Lord, Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for ye how about she is your God. Like I say in the last days, man. I want you how about she might shout to have my spirit autopilot. Hey, the Lord said go straight. Hey, the, the Lord said go five paces and jump off this cliff because somewhere down there, I'll, an angel will pick me up or I'll get the spiritual powers. Of I'm saying, Lord, please guide me. Please guide me, man. I mean, I imagine when Peter was told to walk in the water, if he believed that was Jehovah's shine, he saw the doubt and it started sinking. 
But yo, man, faith, man, we, we gotta have it. There's there, there's no way you can you can do what you, what we're doing without faith. There's no way we're gonna be saved without faith. You gotta have faith. You gotta believe you're gonna be saved. You have to believe. If you doubt it, then guess what? Your secure is gone. You know. Um, second Ezra chapter 16, verse 75. Be you not afraid, neither doubt for Yahweh Bashim Al Shah is your God, in the guide of them who keep my commandments. Don't take the seed here. What's the commandment? And precept saith the Lord God, let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. Right? So, in other words, yeah, we're in these fleshly bodies. You have a shot to die for your sins, so don't worry about it. As long as you're not willfully sinning, how about Shema Shai got your back? Hell, our back, I should say, right? So with that being said, I pray that you was edified and fed. Stay in the spirit. Don't fear it. Just endure it. Ask for forgiveness. Pray without ceasing. Stay humble. Remain diligent. Come on, Sha'Allah. Walk the ball, Shalom. Remember, the masses are supposed to be blind because um, the slain of the Lord shall be many. And the Lord said he kept him a small cluster of grapes from the great vine, right? So we're the ones who are supposed to be um, the, the few, the proud, <laughs> not the proud, but the few of the Lord's um, chosen people to be saved. Y'all remember that? Hey, the Wadi Haba Shema Shah for y'all, man. Hey, I feed off y'all energy. It's called synergy. Hey, the water for you also come uh, command to the spiritual potluck, all right? So with that being said, Shalom, 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 Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom.